Sometimes I like to chase my lesbian wife around elevators. Right? And it makes me horny. It makes me horny to chase my lesbian wife around an elevator. Yeah. And we were just like, (laughs) what? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then Um, we had such a good bit where you started it. You just started running around like you're in an (laughs) elevator. And I was chasing you. And I was like, I'm going to touch you. (laughs) Antonia, tell me something that you're scared to do. Um, that's a good question. You you have no fear. You're so brave. Oh, um, do my taxes this year. <laughs> you are a badass, <laughs> and you're a badass, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I'm so <coughs> scared of my taxes. Me, I'm so I haven't. Too. Do you have an accountant? No, I. And you, you use TurboTax? Yeah, and I think this is the first year where that is not going to cut it. Right? Same. Yeah, I think so it's like too. There's too much independent, too much the business stuff. accounts and the the cr- 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 yes, yeah, uh, comedy accounts. Yes. Ugh. This is Yenta podcast. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Yenta, the podcast that's sometimes about comedy, sometimes about Judaism, and always, always about, about gossip. gossip. <laughs> I'm Antonia Lassar. I'm at Antonia Lestar on Instagram, dropping the handle. Smart. I'm Ray Schiller, newly <gasps> at Ray Schiller. Huge. Crazy. That is so dignified. So much drama <laughs> in that decision. <laughs> It was a really hard choice. It's like coming it's, out. I know. I had to come out as boring. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Schiller. Ray on the way was so cute. Yeah, it was but so cute. It, d- it wasn't really doing much for like name recognition. I s- I've seen that like with so many creators who've gotten big that they've reverted from their fun cool name yeah to their boring well name. i don't i wouldn't say like i've gotten big and that's why but <laughs> you're huge I, i'm i know you i'm just huge headlined the yeah. minnesota jcc <laughs> you're yeah huge. Oh, whatever <laughs> <laughs> we are huge we are yeah i i like of someone who uh is a like a content manager like he like actually like knows shit yeah i was like you should change your name and i was like fine Oh my god! Is he giving you more advice on things? Well, he was gonna give me more advice, but then he wanted to charge me like over a thousand dollars. I said, I said, mm, <laughs> nah, no, I can't afford that not right worth now. It. Not worth Have it. Have you seen this apartment? <laughs> I cannot pay for that. <laughs> you're one rug at a time. <laughs> Tony's like, you're decorating this slow, so slowly, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I'm poor, bitch, and it wasn't <laughs> meant as an insult. <laughs> But Ray took it as one. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, 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 it's not. Um, I'm going to keep my art on the floor. And that is art. (laughs) Yeah. You know, you're subverting Mm. the expectations of where art should be. Oh, my God. That's so smart. I'm doing it uniquely and in my own way. And I have a voice. And my voice says, put the art on the (laughs) floor. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let's talk about our show. Okay, so we, yeah, yes. Okay, so that's yeah. That I'm so excited to talk about this. That this episode, this is just like a the two Yentas get together and chat episode. Yeah, but it's like very Which exciting. We, all, we know you love that. You that's love your favorite. That. You freaking love that. <laughs> yeah, you dirty Yenta. <laughs> you love listening to us talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be dirt more gross, but that was gross. Yeah, you dirty. You watch us. Okay, I'm done. I can't do it. I can't do it. It doesn't work to a camera. Mm. I I can do it to like a person. Yeah, tell me more. No, I can't. <laughs> I actually, uh, I was trying. This is so t- such a tangent. But I was at the improv the other day, and there was like a bunch of boys talking about orgies that they used to have at the comedy store. What? It was crazy. It was crazy. Like. At at the comedy store? At the comedy store. It was like an older group of comedians who were like, you have no idea what it used to be like there. Like, I watched... I'm going to say it. He's like, I watched Ari Shafir get blown on stage. What? (laughs) That's what he said. What? I swear. Notable Jew. 
hilarious. I love his special. I love his. I I like his special. Oh, the new one. Wait, G- what new one? Jew. Oh yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not oh, so new oh, anymore. Oh yeah, you're right. Probably yeah. like the last few years. Yeah. Yeah, I like um, it a lot. Yeah, I uh, like it because it's Jewish. Yeah. And then the and rest, the only and that's basically yeah. it. I liked it because he admitted that women were second class citizens in Orthodox Judaism, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. oh, finally, because <laughs> no one else can admit that. <laughs> it's that's the thing that we don't talk about enough. I know is <laughs> sexism in Orthodox Judaism. I, I think stop we need eating this apple. Oh my god! Yeah, don't <laughs> eat on mic. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? I watched one clip of Avital eating some almonds on Mike in her episode, and it's it's bad. It's bad. Okay. Um. Okay, but back to our show. Yes, yes, yes. Should I okay. cut that bit about Ari Shafir? No, I love it. Okay. Maybe he'll come on the podcast. And who knows? It's just a rumor. Just this a rumor. isn't fact checked. Ari, come on the podcast. Yeah. And and, and, and fight and, that claim. And, and if tell that's us not true, tell us the real story. And if it is true. Also, come on and tell us the real story. <laughs> yeah, because we have so many questions. Yeah. Wow, what a guy. Anyway, oh wait, so the okay. show. So we just got back from our like first. huge first ever headlining live podcast show at the JCC of Minnesota huge. in St. Paul. I know, and Antonia tours all the time around the U.S. And you do an hour and like, you you know, you're used to being the talent. Yeah. I was not used to it. Oh, yeah. It what was, was it like insane. for you? insane. I don't know. I just felt like it was like we get in and then we have like uh, a chaperone or like a, what's not, it's not a chaperone, but a it's a little like bit like an escort, an escort through the building, an escort through the building who like took us to our green room and was responsible for our well-being and was like, what's next do you want? And like. And and then we did like a a tech run through before, and they were like, <laughs> "What's your set list? And do you want to enter from stage left or stage right?" And I was like, "What is this stage? <laughs> What's the <this> stage?" <laughs> and um, yeah, it just all felt like very official, and the and the I, I mean, like as official as you can get for a JCC, but yeah. <laughs> but like, but they were good. They, they were, were very, very professional. They were actually very for professional JCC. for yeah. They were actually incredibly. They were more professional than probably like a comedy club. Oh, e- absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like, I don't know. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> for that's sure. That's how it works. Yeah. I mean, like, I have. I have the opposite experience when I do shows in like actual comedy clubs because I'm so used to getting the VIP treatment from JCCs and right. synagogues that like when there isn't an escort who's like prepared a basket of snacks for me, I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, what am I? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I know. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm used to the shit garbage treatment. Yeah. Garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was really nice to feel like yeah. the talent. And I told my dad that, and he was like, "Yeah, they paid a lot of money for you. Of yeah. course they're gonna, of course they're gonna make you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that what he said? That's what he said. It's very, very, very well, very yeah, intelligent. thoughtful, um, articulate, and uh, yeah. So that felt really nice. And they did have, and yeah, it was really nice. Like they put us in a crazy hotel yeah on the runway on the runway of, of, a, of, of an airport, airport. <laughs> <laughs> like literally <laughs> on the runway yeah it was like the planes were mm, f- taking off next to us even though i'm surprised i actually didn't hear them i know did you no i had they must have spent so much on soundproofing yeah 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 that was insane levels of because like we anything. were literally oh, i was a hundred yeah. feet away from the plane no, that was taking off we were watching them come in and out all day yeah it was actually kind of uh, like great cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we were in the middle of nowhere we you couldn't leave the hotel because you were literally yeah. on the runway mm-hmm. um so that was but crazy. it was a nice hotel it was really nice and it's yeah actually it was really nice like the lobby area yeah had one of the best like hang in the lobby For setups sh- yeah that i've seen in a while yeah yeah and the rooms 
gorgeous gorgeous the There's, lights did you, did you see the light yes. that was like the overhead light above the bed yes they were they were nice. nicer than your average yeah, 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 hotel yeah. lamp yeah yeah look at us it's <laughs> we're, so, we're it's, touring <laughs> comedians we're comedians it's so is this thrilling. interesting content for you listener <laughs> I it can't is. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hear about the lights in our hotel rooms. <laughs> let's, let's get more explicit about the lights. <laughs> but so let's talk show. Yeah. So I would say like big picture, the show was a huge success. Yes. And uh, well, listener, this is the first time we've had, we've really talked Debriefed. about it. Yeah, Debriefed. Yeah. Like, I we literally really got to because we were both sick. Yes. That was the other thing is <laughs> we were both. Show, incredibly sick yes and tony is sicker than i was you well you uh, sort of had me beat you started sicker and then we kind of and then like, i met you and <laughs> yeah, i got sicker yeah, than yeah. you and then, <laughs> and then we kind of evened out yeah um and the producer was sick yeah. it was insane so so that, everyone was on so much day quill yes and but the adrenaline really did help me it, feel better it really did i i felt like kind of indestructible for about four hours. Yeah. <laughs> then I got back to the <laughs> hotel yeah. and slept for 25 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the way back, you were like, yeah, I can do a podcast tomorrow. And then <laughs> in the morning, you're like, I cannot no way. do a podcast no tomorrow. Way. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, the, that's why we haven't debriefed because like, yeah. we're sa- whatever. So, okay, overall huge success. Yeah. At the end of the show, the director, shout out Riv, was like, I'm going to, promote you on this facebook group for jewish yeah artists booking yes this is like some insight into our like business process is we're like completely dependent on word of mouth one-on-one bookings yeah. and so like the, uh, the person who booked us at the jcc thought it was so fantastic our show that they were like i'm gonna hype you up to all the other like program bookers it's huge at other jewish institutions which I- is such a compliment a huge compliment because you don't, they don't think they say their, that to everyone right their, yeah they're like exposing their own judgment when they like pitch a show right or, like what if they pitch a show and it's bad so like to me that's that's a marker of okay we we did great yes you know and then and then my friends who came to the show yeah were genuinely hyping us up they gave us they gave me like two hours of positive feedback <laughs> about our show they you surround yourself with the best people. I know. Just like Artem. That's, <laughs> what, he, <laughs> that's what he does after every show. I I need that more of that in my life. I know. And yeah. we still need to do it the, to the, you the, as I well. Know. Because Artem was distraught <laughs> really? after our show in LA when he saw that you seemed like not pumped like he seemed like he thought you didn't seem thrilled about how the show went and he thought you should have been thrilled i agree yeah and yeah he has been telling me like okay we need to have ray sit down have dinner so i can just yell at them (laughs) (laughs) how great they are i you know it's it's just i think and this is why i'm like so i'm learning so much from you all the time but this is like one of Uh the um, amazing another thing i'm like my first instinct after a show is to be like (laughs) Oh, what did I do wrong? Everything I did was so bad. Blah yeah. blah, blah blah blah, and that's just not helpful. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just not a good approach. Like what you're doing is great, which is like the day of the show, everything great. After, then we can talk about like, okay, what can we do better? Blah blah blah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm just too fragile in yeah. the 24 hours after a show. Yeah. To like critique it. critique it. I know, but then I'm like, I'm only gonna get. Well, the other part of this is wrong with me. Like, I don't believe people when they tell me that they liked it. Ugh, you know, I'm like, terrible. oh, you're just saying that. Like, with your friends that have been like, they're like, oh, it's so great. I don't, I don't think that. Oh, but yeah. Y- yeah. I understand <laughs> that impulse. And I think they really thought Okay, it. fine. Okay. L- okay I keep so interrupting you. Tell me what they said. They yeah. loved. Um, their favorite joke. I think I told you this. Their favorite joke of the night was when you said that converting to judaism should be listening to two jews talk for an hour i can't believe that it's not even that funny i <laughs> agree that it didn't stick out to me as even <laughs> your best joke and they said it over and over and over it really stuck with them Wow. Well. um they said that they thought we were like masterful at just turning any topic into a punchline and i was like we were doing punchlines <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I didn't see that either. Yeah, it's like we were just kind of chatting. Yeah. <laughs> That's just sort of like I think that like we take for granted that we're two funny people. Right, 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 right. And right. that we can say funny things. That's yeah. I don't think we do. Yeah. I don't <laughs> yeah, I think we <laughs> I think we I think we're like No. I think you're hilarious. Wait. Oh my god. You're do doing it. you're literally do. doing the thing what that thing? you that you just said you do. You're right, you're right, you're right. You what tell you that you're hilarious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're always How doing dare that. I? I mean like, yes, I am yeah. hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am. I'm hilarious and I'm you super are. talented. You're so talented. And so are so you, funny. you idiot. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so they thought everything was good at uh, turning into... Yeah, we, they just, like, were literally... We like, they were, lot. like, marveling. They were, like, you were so quick, which, to be honest, is not a word that I would ever think of for myself. You were so quick. Uh, you were, too. No, 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 Both you were. We just, like... Yeah, 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 we were. We picked up the ball. It was crazy. Yes. Yeah. There were so many great moments. Yeah. Like, um, oh, they thought it was so great how we did a bit where someone someone's dad was having an affair and they were wondering if they should confront him about it. Yeah. And we didn't answer the question and said, we started the bit. We just introduced like, hi dad, <laughs> I hear you're having an affair, but I didn't even get that far because <laughs> that was so funny. Instead, I just pivoted it to be like, this is, it requires backstory for the audience. But like we discovered midway through the show that the entire audience was not, not Jewish. Jewish and not queer. Yeah. And so, you know what? Stop. We can do, <laughs> we can do comedy for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Not just Jews and not just queers. But if you're here and you're Jewish and queer, we love you too. We love you too. But we also love the Goyesha straights. Yeah. We're, we're comedians for everyone. For everyone. I'm so sick of people saying, Oh, a your Jewish queer comedian? <laughs> yeah, I'm no. so sick of putting that as the first line of my bio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So we discovered that they were all not Jewish. Yeah. And Antonia discovered that during, during your set. My stand-up set. And it, you, you just handled that so perfectly. <sighs> like, they loved you. <laughs> yeah. They uh, ate it up how you handled that. It was so perfect. And 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 I think that sh that like really just was a huge twist it, in the show, and it, and they loved it. It was, and it like broke open the show. Yes, yeah. Like from that, like I would say we were getting, <laughs> we were getting solid laughs up yep. until that point. Yeah. But from that moment on, we killed. It was amazing. And like, yeah. Okay, let's talk through that moment. Okay. So. Right, we we've done the whole show. We've done half of the show up until then, yeah. where we've done some secrets. We've done we've asked each other questions. It's right. been very podcasty. Yeah, we had a couple like the bits. game. We had an amazing game. Yeah, but all of these things I have to say were hitting a little less hard than I was expecting. Me them to too. Hit. Less hard than they hit in L.A. The, well, the game especially. The game. The game especially. crushed in L.A. They didn't, but but also because they probably won't do it. I don't exactly, know exactly because. Yeah. I think some of them didn't even know what Rosh Hashanah is. That's insane. The game was, did this celebrity post for Rosh Hashanah? Yeah. And hilarious idea. Hilarious idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had amazing content and it didn't hit that hard. Yeah. But in LA, in our LA show, it like blew the roof yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was so good. Yeah. And, and so I was kind of like... I was like, okay, maybe this is just like not a great audience. And then in the middle, and then you did your stand-up set, which actually, actually, that's when the laughs started to get big. Because in your stand-up set, you covered non-Jewish stuff. Mm. And like, and you covered things that were like so applicable for everyone. And even like your very Jewish joke, like about the GPS. Yeah. That one didn't hit as hard. I know. As all the other ones. Which I, now, in retrospect, I'm understanding why that happened. In the moment, I was just like, what's going what's on? What's going on? Yeah, 100%. But, like, you really started, yeah, I think you really started to kill when you started doing your stand-up set. 
I think I think that like started the room. I mean, yeah, because it was like just joke, joke, joke versus what we were doing before was le- was more like conversational. But yeah. also like we had a lot of jokes before. We did, we did. And I think it was like a more approachable subject matter for maybe, them. Maybe, maybe. And I try to have my jokes, even though they are very Jewish and very queer, like I want them to be applicable for a he- for everyone. Yeah. And I was talking to another friend of mine about this. I don't remember her name, but there's this like really big Indian woman comedian. She's like a mom. Zarna Garg? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. she kind of short? Yes, yeah. Yes. And she's huge. She's and, amazing. But her, her comedy is like very specific yes. about being an Indian immigrant mother. And like, she's huge yeah you know so it's like but because it's so it i could still feel it for hours about her yeah i think she's amazing yeah yeah and Uh, and because she's so specific and also i heard her on a podcast recently saying that like she got really big really fast because her entire indian community would come out to all of her shows she'd have a hundred community members come to a show because they were so excited and they love her someone was willing that like an Indian woman was willing to shit talk her mother-in-law finally, yeah. <laughs> That's you know, so funny. and like yeah. the cultural specificity is like what just helped like blow her up. And she's so amazing. Yeah. And also she's incredibly relatable. Right. Like even, even though, though she's so specific, it's not our culture at all, but like, yeah. So that's what I want. I want my comedy to be like, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so you were, so you so did your stand up set. Yeah. Things started really cooking. Then in the middle of my set or in the beginning of my set, I I like do, this is a bit that I've been doing for a while. I do sort of like a comb over of the audience. I'm like, who's reform, who's orthodox, who's conservative. But the way you do it is very funny. Yeah. And there's some good punchlines in there. And, and then I actually almost wasn't going to ask this because I actually assumed that everyone was Jewish. So I Same. almost didn't ask, are there any non-Jews here? And then it was like a last minute thing, like in the moment I was like, oh yeah, are there, what about non-Jews? And I, when you asked that, I was like, what? don't ask that. Like, don't make, I know in my head, I was like, don't out them. Like there's going to be like three of them. Like, don't make them feel bad. Could you see, could you see the number of hands that were going Yeah, up? it was a lot. Because I was like in between, like looking at you on the stage from the side and looking at the audience. Oh, okay. So you could so see I the saw, audience. Yeah. So you could also see for the audience that when I asked for reform, conservative, orthodox, Sephardi, Mizrahi, there were not a lot of hands going up. No, yeah. Like shockingly few hands going up. Right. And I was like, I at first thought like they're just shy, mm-hmm. you know? But Jews are not shy. But I was like... About we're not that. shy about this kind yeah, of thing we yeah. love identifying yeah yeah and so then are there any non-jews ha- the whole room's hands were like 80 percent of the audience yeah like i think 80 percent is probably accurate right yeah 75 maybe yeah 70, it was 80. just like this wave yeah of <laughs> and, uh, it's probably because they were like so excited to share it too yeah because <laughs> in their heads the whole time they were like do they not know that we're not jewish <laughs> or did all of them think they were the one non-jew uh, there <laughs> no i feel like they all knew each other <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> yeah and so then in that moment i actually don't totally remember what i did because i blacked out a little bit yeah like, that's fair. i just i was just sort of like what the fuck is happening? Yeah, it was just like a very natural reaction and they just loved it. Yeah, it was just natural yeah. and I and like, I sort of naturally I panicked up reevaluate there. Reevaluate all my jokes right now. <laughs> yeah, and I had to pull out my list of jokes and yeah. I was like, okay, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, but they, they ate it up. They ate it up. Yeah, they loved it. And then for the rest of the show, if we so much as breathed the fact that they were not jewish and straight <laughs> they loved it they exploded <laughs> and it was it became like the cheapest <laughs> yeah. laugh but we could just say the word christian and <laughs> the <laughs> audience would lose their mind <laughs> at the jcc at the JCC. christian is the biggest punchline possible it's so it's <laughs> so funny that's so funny so 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 then we did that bit about the divorce yes and instead of even getting into the weeds of like giving this poor person advice yeah we tried to do an act out of like 
Oh, a role play. A role play. You were like, you're the dad. Yeah, you're and I'm the, the kid. kid. And pretend that you have to tell me <laughs> that. <laughs> and I was like, dad, um, as you know, I'm your straight Christian child. <laughs> <laughs> and then like screams of laughter. <laughs> and we just ended the bit yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, That was really funny. The other bit that I loved was the elevator bit. Yes, I was going to say the yeah. elevator bit was so good. So funny. I love it like doing act outs i love doing physical comedy me too up there well i'm like terrified of it i'm like i'm just not you i don't know i don't do it a lot and uh, it's like improv and yeah. that's scary but i think i just that show made me realize how easy it is yes like literally all i did was pretend to be in an elevator for like <laughs> one second and they were like Wait, let's tell them what what the context <laughs> was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we spoiling all of it? No, because we're never gonna, gonna do, do this again. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. and also you can buy the yes. recording of the whole show. Yes, we're giving exactly. You, like tiny <laughs> insights. We're, we're there was you, a whole show to watch. You play by play yeah. of the show, but go buy it. <laughs> go buy it. <laughs> it's pay what you want. We're gonna put. Oh, the, great. Yeah, we'll put the link in the in the description. Um, if you want to watch the whole show and how great we were. Great. Yeah. You can watch it. Okay. Um, we got a question, yeah. a secret that was like, sometimes I like to chase my lesbian wife around elevators. <laughs> right? And it makes me horny. It makes me horny to chase my lesbian wife around an elevator. Yeah. And we were just like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> elevators are not that big. <laughs> are you like, a, r- a race in the elevator? Yeah, yeah, and then and we, we had such a good bit where you started it. You just started running around like <laughs> you're in an elevator, and I was chasing you, and I was like, I'm going to touch you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm so horny. Yeah. For you. <laughs> and, then was, and then I looked at you, and I was like, no, I can't even do that. I know, literally, as soon as we got close enough, I was like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of my favorite moments for sure. Yeah, okay. it was great. Yeah, other favorite moments? Um, the singing, the song. Oh, I was like, was it? No, oh, really. yeah, of course. The song at the end when everyone was like actually singing along. That Amazing. was re- that felt really nice. I was like, am I a rock star? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, they know all my lyrics. Oh my <laughs> um we're not gonna spoil the song but it's it's so very funny. good yeah that's reason enough to buy the recording of yeah. this show yeah, yeah yeah um i don't know do you have any other favorites i the the moment that i keep coming back to is the moment of discovering the audience mm-hmm. but because like in my stand-up i've been like I'm still at a place where I am anchored to my text. Mm. Like it is a script. Like it's very theater. I'm like, I have funny yeah. words and this is the order that I say them. Right. And it's holding me back. I can tell mm-hmm. because like, it's not making me flex to the room and then the room can feel it. And like mm. s- stand up really works when you are really in the moment with the room. For sure. And so that was a moment actually the whole doing both of doing these shows with you entirely has like given me so much more confidence that I am capable of being funny on the spot on the spot for sure which you do improv I know but like it's like I have this like mental block yeah you know okay as, and even to be honest i don't even think that i'm that strong at improv aren't you like top level of ucb i'm a i'm a top level sketch i'm like a team member of sketch oh, at ucb right, i'm right, not right. an improv team member oh, okay S- uh, yeah that's yeah. Right. yeah yeah and but um still huge still huge i'm still insanely yeah. hard to do yeah and i'm but, so proud of that yeah. accomplishment mm-hmm. but my improv is like yeah, like I just have a mental block. And and doing this podcast with you and doing these live shows with you is the first time I've done a show that's like truly like improv in the moment. Like that's yeah. the concept. Yeah. It's like we get up there with no script. But to be honest, like it feels 
I have no fear going into these shows. Zero. That's amazing. Because you're there. Mm. Because like, yeah, I know that like our chemistry is so good that like if I have a, a lag for a second, you're there. Mm-hmm. Like you are so strong. You're so funny. I just feel like you bring out the funny in me. Shut the fuck up. Really? <laughs> Okay. Shut the f- <laughs> fuck up. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can we record this? But we are we recording. Are. <laughs> I have to play it back for myself. Yeah. Um. I. 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 Wait. Are you, do, you, do you have more to say? Yeah. Up? Yeah. Like going into my regular stand-up shows. Yeah. I am terrified. I honestly forgot how new you are at stand-up. Yes, until I'm this exact so moment new yeah at stand up. yeah and like and i don't How like to, like a like a year i guess right a year and a half maybe right i mean i'm i'm also very new but yeah. in my head you're like so many more years and it's, it's because i have this huge background of comedic solo performance right which is insane extremely similar like yeah i have 10 years of comedic solo of performance. doing an hour of doing an hour that's stand up exactly it it's is. like so i would say you're that new. Yeah. but the thing the difference with that is that an audience goes in with the expectation of that you theater. have a script mm-hmm. and you and then and so do you and you do your script Got and it. they expect your script yeah. And so the big difference between theater and stand up, yeah. like solo shows and stand up, is is like this in the moment aliveness that anything could happen. Mm-hmm. And not every stand up does that. Like Mike Birbiglia doesn't really. Yeah. Oh, he he does like kind of more one hour theater. Yeah. Mix of that. Yeah. And I like that. I mean, I don't think I'll ever. Well, who knows? Mm. Do like an entirely crowd work special. Right. But I mean, that is basically gossip. what we did. A gossip special. Yeah. An hour of gossip. And so like it was kind of a, I think, like landmark moment in my like stand up development to mm. like gain the confidence to be like, oh, my God, I have the skills. You do. To do an hour long improvised show. With you. I wouldn't say that the, it was an hour of improvising, no. but, but I it hear was what like, you mean. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I, ca- I still think of it as improv because even though there was so much that was planned, yeah, everything was like That's had the naturalness of, yeah, like n- nothing ever had to stick to the script. Right, right. That's true. That's you know, true. it's so crazy to me that you say that because I feel like at least towards the beginning, I was more like feeling like, oh, I felt like there was more of a wall between us and the audience. And then you were really good at like talking to the audience and like in l- that in moment. Yeah. Yeah. And like being more f- bringing, bringing them into the conversation with us. Yeah. And I think that was really big. And I, uh yeah there I, for me there was like this huge wall between us i completely agree i felt, felt that. that wall yeah and i was think i when i was thinking about that going into the stand-up too that i was like i, I was you felt the wall I, no i felt like the wall came, when you started to came down some, earlier like it came in down bit, earlier in earlier yeah bits. when you were like asking them about debbie friedman and the yeah and the therapist like yeah that was like oh i was like oh we can talk to them yes that was a moment when i was like i know i'm like veering off plan a lot but i really felt good. like we needed no, to connect you were so smart yeah 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 it was that was really good that you did that i so i almost like forgot that i do stand up yeah <laughs> 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 the like natural conversation yeah. is your specialty yeah 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 i forgot that i do that sometimes yes um and i went into it more of like oh this is a theater show yes so it's good it's good i mean it was only the first time we did it so we'll, like you know in mirza shan that we do it more like we're, we're good, yeah. so good at it I and guess, i yeah. really think like i think we're a hit show for these places yeah for the jcc like around the world like <laughs> this is a slam dunk show honestly i know it's so fun it's, it's so, so easy fun. it's so dewy they get to feel like they have good queer representation oh yeah so they get to be like we're allies yeah you know yeah and and it's like 
I think it's kind of like a foolproof fun night for people it's because so fun. everyone loves gossip. Everyone loves gossip and like they're involved in the show. Yeah. And yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm trying not to get my hopes up. Did you burp? Yes. Oh, nice. Kind of into the mic. Burp into the mic. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, that's what the listeners Oops. are here for. <laughs> your burps. Should we talk about what we could do better? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. What are some of your thoughts? Well, I'll say uh, the secret where I came off looking like such a dick. Yes. I wish. <coughs> I wish I like just like. And this is a this is something that I'm gonna get better at as I just perform more or whatever. Is like when I feel the fear of the audience. It's, yes. You know what I mean. I I take on their emotions because like they're feeling. Yeah, and then I'm like, uh, but instead I have to be like, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, what do you want for like, did you, whatever, this is what, yeah, like uh, you're modeling vulnerability. Yeah, exactly. You're like, welcome. Yeah. Are any of you brave enough to admit to <laughs> yeah. such a heinous oh, <laughs> fault? <laughs> <laughs> or like, well, the, the background is I basically, Antonia asked me like, what do your exes say about you yeah like what would all your exes agree you should work on? well that i should work on and i and i said the truth which is that sometimes i say shit and then i take it back which is just a human thing to fucking do yeah it is and or whatever like, that's like not so bad and then and then you said and then i said the story of like when i dated someone that i don't know if i said it on this podcast but uh i dated someone that was older and like early on in our relationship i was like i i would be ready to have kids soon and she and then I thought about it more and we like had more real conversations and it became more of a real thing. And I was like, actually, I don't think I can like commit to this. And we broke up and they got so mad at they, me for that. They, I, I actually couldn't tell what happened. I wasn't sure. They got silent. They got so silent. I'm not sure what the emotion was behind that silence. Like, No, I know I came off like a Sometimes I feel like silence like that is just... They were expecting a joke and then they didn't get a joke. Yeah. And then they're just off balance. Right. Sometimes they're just like, sometimes they're mad at you. Sometimes they're just sort of like taken aback by your vulnerability. Like I can right. see all of those things being a possibility, not th just them being mad at you. Mm. But what it practically looked like was they were they were dead silent. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, what you wanted me to like stay with her? Like, is that <laughs> yeah? Are you, like, you want me to stay with her just to not break up with her so that I have you want me to have babies with her? You want me to die with her even though I don't want to? <laughs> because I <laughs> accidentally said yeah. oh. when we first got together, you know. So, so that's something that I really have to like just remember when yes. I'm in that in that moment, and that's my learning lesson from that. You know, I think I also can take a page out of that book as yeah. well. Like I feel like that technique, that skill of figuring out how to turn everything into a punchline yeah. is like, it's just going to keep us getting better and better. Yeah, for sure. And like, but you hand, you, you saved me in that moment. What did I, I, I don't remember, <laughs> but I think it was just like, I turned to you and I was like, do they all hate me right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which honestly might, that also, worked yeah i it think did, it, it got i remember you got like a tiny laugh with something like that yeah yeah and then we somehow moved we i don't think we that. actually ever got a big laugh out of that i think we yeah. moved on to something quickly i agree but i really like your impulse of like of the way you could could have turn that into a bit yeah is yeah, getting yeah. mad at the audience yeah yeah it's like there's so many bits we could have done about that yeah do you have a, do you have other ideas yeah i'm like thinking like yeah, just be like, like, oh, you think that's bad? Like, wait till you hear about the time I accidentally got baptized. Like, <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I pretended I promised my soul to someone. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you can just say that with everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you think, think that's, that's bad? bad? I got baptized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That would only work in a Jewish room. Yeah, what, that um, room would that room would not have taken that well. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I made it that. Um, okay, our, uh, our, we have to wrap up soon. Yeah, we do. Um, anything else? Um, I know we have like so many other things to talk about, but I th I feel like this is a fun little. This one, I think so too. Yeah. I like 
As a listener, I love episodes like this where comedians go really deep into the process. I like it too. I don't know if our listeners will like it. I don't know if you like it. Let us know if you hate this. (laughs) Sucks for you. Yeah. Fuck (laughs) you. (laughs) What? No, I'm sorry. Don't be mad at us. (laughs) You think this is bad? Let me tell you about the time I got baptized. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect timing. Um, so yeah, I think that's all we have to talk about. And I want to experiment with doing like a wrap up instead of just an abrupt ending. Yes, we spoke about that. Yeah. So why don't we say our social media handles if we have any upcoming shows, mm-hmm. and then give a yeah to sign up. Wait, we had an idea. We had an idea that was like stay horny or something like that. Yes, I don't remember what it was. Stay yenta or like. Keep yenting. Keep yenting. Yent away. I like stay horny. <laughs> stay horny. <laughs> and stay horny. And stay horny. Okay, so I'm... Thank you so much for listening. Thank I'm you so Antonia Lassar. That's at Antonia Lassar on all social media platforms. At my show in St. Louis, a man approached me after the show to be like, um, I don't think you know this, but you misspelled your name in your social media handle. Oh and man, I was shut like... Shut the fuck up. You fucking Jew. <laughs> <laughs> wait are you gonna change your name to antonia lastar because i changed my name to ray Schiller? i don't think so okay that's fair i i love lastar yeah so at antonia lastar i have a show coming up in la this is actually a big deal this is my first time doing my stand-up hour in its entirety here in la it's at temple isaiah on march 21st and then i also have some sketches at the e carporum spiel huge like two days later no that's not you guys don't realize how which big is of like a deal that actually is. kind of like star studded like celebrity film like actually do you so, want to say who, who you're working with on that no because it's kind of in flux okay yeah unfortunately um and yeah that's me uh i'm ray schiller at ray schiller uh shows coming up i have one at the elysian on april 6th hell yeah and i have i'm doing i didn't tell you this yet i'm doing the jq pride shabbat <gasps> at ecar oh my god yeah june 6th right i just had the call today that's kind of a big gig it is right yeah yeah how long are you doing half an hour oh my god it's crazy i need 25 minutes more of material this is huge yeah, yeah because yeah. we saw avital do last a year. version was hers like officially pride shabbat or was it just like a shabbat? it was officially pride shabbat but they did it at the temple yeah, israel of, of hollywood. hollywood and this year they're doing it at ikar ikar is way bigger it is more celebs Even more celebs oh my god I that's know. an amazing gig i know it's gonna be me and maybe dylan adler oh i love that i love dylan is what they said. I I, maybe I shouldn't announce that, but come for Dylan because he's amazing. <laughs> he's amazing. And then you'll have me on the side. I love that. Okay. And um, what's the Stay other Stay horny. Thing? Stay horny. <laughs> <laughs>